What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a radial progress bar, or circular progress bar, round progress bar, whatever you want to call it. So, for example, if you wanted to have your health bar be sort of circular, like I've got down the bottom right here, if I press the minus key on my keyboard, you'll see that that progress bar empties. Very, very nice. And just to give you a second example of this progress bar at work, if you look down the bottom left hand side of the screen, when I press the left mouse button, we've got a progress bar that fills. And if I release the left mouse button, it empties like so. So without further ado, guys, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty, guys. Now, all I've done is create a new project using the third person template. But FYI, this will work in any kind of project. Uh, so yeah, let's create our radial progress bar. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder. And I'm just going to call it rad prog bar for radial progress bar and open this up and this is actually going to be a material instance so first we need to create the material and the logic inside of that so let's right click and go to material create a new material and i'm going to call this m underscore rad prog bar and open this up First thing we want to do in here is change the material domain to user interface and the blend mode we're going to use is translucent just because it helps to sort of um, soften it up a little bit. It looks a little bit nicer. So let's use translucent and in the final color here, we can just plug in a value of one. So if I hold one and click on the graph here, I'll get this sort of single value here and I can change it to one and plug it in here to the final color. And you can see we've just got this square right here. Uh, the next thing we can do is find a radial gradient exponential. Radial gradient exponential. And if we plug this into the opacity, you'll see that it gives us a kind of circle. So uh, we can again hold one and click twice down here and let's plug one of these into the radius and one into the density. Let's make the radius something like 0 0.5 and let's make the density something like, let's make it 250 for now. And you'll see this gives us a circle. So this is basically going to be how sharp this looks. If we change this down to something like 50, you'll see that it looks a lot softer around the outside. And if we crank this up to something like 500, it should be very crisp indeed. So it just depends on uh, sort of how soft you want this to look. Uh, okay, so we actually need to subtract a circle from this circle to give us this kind of radial effect. So we can duplicate this node here and we can plug this density value into the density here as well. And while we're at it, we might right click on this one, convert it to parameter, and let's just call it sharpness. And we can also take this one here and subtract. And what we want to subtract is another value, and this is going to be our thickness. So if we set this to 0 0.1, for example, or 0 0.15, and we plug this into the radius here, and then we subtract this one from this one and plug this into our opacity. You can see we've got our kind of uh, radial progress bar effect going on here. If we change this to something like 0.05, you see it'll be very thin and 0.2 will be quite thick. Uh, I'm going to leave it as 0.15 for now. And I'm also going to right click on this and convert to parameter. And this can be our thickness. Nice. So now that we've got a kind of circle subtracted from another circle here, we can um, subtract uh, from this, this right here to give us our sort of um, our percentage display, our radial progress bar effect. And how we're going to do that is uh, let's find some empty space up here. And I'll actually move this out here a little bit and find a texture coordinate and a custom rotator. Oops. 
custom rotator. And in the rotation angle here, let's hold one again and click and plug this in here. And we'll make this 0 0.25 and subtract. Get another value here and we'll subtract a 0 0.5 from this. And then um, I'm not going to go in, in depth into what's happening here. Um, but basically we, we need to mirror this. So we're going to multiply by, uh, we'll hold two and click here to get a two vector. We can plug this one in here and make the X one and the Y negative one. And then we can plug this into a vector to radial value. And off of the vector converted to angle here, we can add, hold one and click here to get another value. And this is going to be our percentage here. So we can convert this to a parameter and call it percentage. Need a little bit more space here. We can floor this and then multiply this by the output of this subtraction node here and this will plug into our opacity so this has disappeared because the default value of the percentage here is set to zero but if we set this to 0 0.2 you can see we've got 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.825 so on and so forth so this is our percentage on our progress bar Nice, and that's pretty much all we need to do in here. Um, I'm going to set this default value back to zero, and I'm going to apply and save this and close this, and then I'm going to right click on it and create a material instance. I can just leave that called uh, by default m underscore rad progress bar underscore inst, and we don't actually need to do anything in there. But what we do need to do is uh, set this up with its own widget that will calculate, uh, we'll have a function inside it to, to update the percentage of that progress bar. So we can right click and go to user interface and widget blueprint, user widget, and I'll call this WBP underscore rad prog bar and open this up. And this is basically just going to contain the progress bar and we'll add this widget uh, to any other widgets that we want to use it in. So we can contain it in a size box. We'll select the size box and we'll make the height and the width 300 by 300. And we'll change this from fill screen to desired. And then we will also grab an image put that in the size box. And if we select the image and drop down brush in appearance here, the image here, we can find our rad prog bar inst and add that. We can't see it here because uh, the default has been set to zero, um, but you'll, you'll see this working in a moment. So the next thing we need to do is go to the graph and we need to create a function that will, will sort of um, update the, the progress bar uh, percentage. So we'll create a function and call it update percentage. And we'll give this one input. It will be percentage of type float. And the first thing we need to do is create a dy dynamic material instance of that material so that we can change it at runtime. So create dynamic material instance. The parent is going to be our rad prog bar inst. And let's promote this to a variable and we'll call it rad prog bar. And let's also grab our image here and we will set brush from material. So we can plug this material in here. We're setting that uh, the brush in the details panel, the brush of that image to this dynamic material instance. But 
we only want to do this once. So what we can do is grab our rad prog bar here, right click and convert to validated get. And then if this is not valid, so if this is the first time this has been called, this uh, variable here will be empty. So it will not be valid. So we can create one. And if it is uh, valid, what we can do is grab our rad prog bar and set scalar parameter value. And here you want to type in the parameter that you want to change, and it has to be named exactly the same as the parameter that you named in the material. So just to be sure, if we open back up our material, we can see we called this parameter name percentage. You could even control C this and paste this in here to make sure it's exactly the same. We're gonna plug this into the is valid and we're also gonna plug this in here. So the first time this is fired off and this is empty, this will be not valid. So we'll create the dynamic uh, material instance, we'll set the brush as it, and then we'll update the percentage. And if it has already been created, we'll just go ahead and set that scalar perimeter value. And we can grab this percentage here, plug it into the value. And that is pretty much all we need to do in here. This function will update the percentage of our radial progress bar. So you probably want to see this in action. So let's go ahead and create one more widget, uh, user interface, widget blueprint, user widget, and we'll call this WBP underscore main, for lack of a better name. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna add a canvas panel and I'm also going to search for my rad prog bar, WBP rad prog bar, and add this to the canvas panel. And then this, I am going to set the size and the size X and the size Y to 300 and 300 to make it square. I'm going to anchor this down the bottom right. And let's just put this at negative 300, negative 300. And I'm going to change the alignment to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, like so. Now you can't see it in here, but if I go back to my material and I just set the percentage to 0 0.5, for example, and go back to that widget, you can see it now and you can change the appearance of this if you like. For example, uh, you could change the color and opacity in the appearance here. So you could make it, you know, a little bit blue. And if you didn't want it, for example, to fill from the top here and around, you could find the transform under render transform and change the angle here. So if, for example, you put it to 90, you could have it fill from the right here and all the way around. And I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And now we can add this, uh, this widget to the viewport and play with this percentage to show you this radial progress bar in action. So I'm going to compile and save, and I'm going to find my characters blueprint in third person blueprints, BP third person character. And on event begin play here, uh, I am just going to hold S and click to get a sequence. And at the top of the sequence here, I am going to create widget. Whoops create widget and select my WBP main that contains my radial progress bar. Uh, let's promote this to a variable and I'm just going to call it UI main. Add this to the viewport, add to viewport. And now that this is on the viewport, let's also um, just set up a very quick and hacky way to set that percentage. So I'm just going to over here find the left mouse button and add a timeline. Very, very quickly, I'm going to open up this timeline, add a float track, set the length to two seconds, hold shift and click twice to add two keyframes here. I'll put this at time zero and value zero. And I'll put this one at time two and value one, which is a 100%. Close this timeline. 
And then on released, I'll plug this into reverse and I will find my UI main here and get my radial progress bar from UI main and find my update percentage function that I created. And I'm just going to plug the float track directly into that percentage like so. And now if I hit play, I've got my radial progress bar here and ah, the, <laughs> the default value was still set to uh, 0 0.5. So we need to change that. Um, if I just go back into my material here and set my default percentage back to zero. Now you can see that that is working correctly. Now I don't really understand why it's so far over to the right there, um, but you can see the radial progress bar working correctly there. I might just show you uh, one more quick example of how you might be able to use this and, and and a quite a nice effect. And that would be, uh, let's say it's your health and it's full by default and you are losing, you know, parts of your health each time you get hit. Um, so what I might do is just go back here and change the default value to one. So it is full and I'm actually gonna change the color to red cause it's my health. And then in my third person character, uh, let's create a new variable and call it health of type float. And the default value here is going to be one. So, uh, you know, you could make this 100 and then use some math to sort of bring it, uh, you know, divided by 100 for the percentage of the progress bar, but I'm just going to make my health one like so. And let's find the minus key. And every time we press the minus key, I'm going to set the health. Whoops. I just uh, made my health a component. <laughs> I'm going to set the health as the health minus um, 0 0.15, something like that. And then what we can do is use this timeline to lerp to the new health. So I'm going to hit play from start here when we update the health. And I'm going to use this to lerp. I can use this as the alpha on the lerp. And I'm just going to need one more variable. So I'm actually going to duplicate health. And for lack of a better name, I'm just going to call it old health. And old health is going to be just essentially the current health before we set this new health, which is our actual health. So we're going to lerp from the old health to the new health, if that makes any sense and plug this in here. And now we should see a nice little effect and we could even open this timeline and smooth this out a little bit. If you wanted, you could change these to auto so they're a bit curved. And now if I hit play, I've got my full health here. And if I hit the minus key, uh, it might have to be the numpad key. The minus key uh, isn't working. It has to be a numpad minus. You can see uh, we just need to make this a bit snappier. So let's make this, let's put this one's value uh, time at mm, 0 0.2 and make the float track 0 0.2. Two seconds is way too long. And now if I hit play and I press minus, you can see, boom, boom, boom. And the great thing about using that timeline and the two variables and the lerp node is that if it happens multiple times very quickly, it will go down to that correct value in the same amount of time. Nice. Guys, 
That's it. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.